Hi, everyone. Welcome to Zen and Tech, our weekly podcast focused on centering your inner geek and using technology to help deal with the stresses of your connected life. I'm Renee, and your host for the show is Georgia. Before we begin, I just want to remind you that while Georgia is a therapist, she's not your therapist. Everything said or implied on this episode is for informational and entertainment purposes only and shouldn't be taken in any way as a replacement for personal, professional care. We had, I am great because we had such fantastic um, feedback on the last show, including, and I'm not going to give any names because they didn't say it publicly, so I don't want to out them, but one of my podcasting idols was kind enough to say that Zen and Tech is one of the few podcasts that they still listen to and one of their favorite podcasts. And that was, I was on, I was just flying on air for a week, Georgia. I was too. I was very, very touched. Um, we love to hear the stories and to find out how it's helping your lives because actually this podcast is more personal than anything else. It's just something that I really enjoy doing. So to hear someone that is someone I look up to enjoys the podcast and get something out of it uh, meant a lot to me. Yeah, and it's nice when people who are in this business for a long time and know what it takes to do these kinds of things and to do it at an exceptional level um, says something nice about you. And since the episode was about taking care of yourself, um, I was happy that they, you know, made me be happy to take care of myself. Yeah, no, and it's uh, that was exactly what the last podcast was on. It was on self care. So, Renee, did you do any self care this week? Did you do your homework? You know, the, one of the things that uh, the way I chose to apply it was interesting because I realized that I was always just about to do it. And like, for example, I was just about to do my super functional exercises or just about to have a good, you know, healthy breakfast. But I would wake up, there'd be messages waiting for work and I'd start working on them. And then it would be like 12 o'clock and I hadn't eaten, I hadn't exercised. So what I chose to do was to prioritize the important things first. So I chose to wake up immediately. I made myself one of those shakes that we talked about on episode three, I think, the one on nutrition. And I did my, uh, my super functional exercises immediately uh, in first thing in the morning. And then I felt great for the rest of the day. And it was, it was both the knowledge, like, it was both because I'd fed my body and I'd fed myself motion and that I'd, I'd prioritized myself that made me feel so good. Yeah, I, I did actually a, lot, a good deal of self-care. And for me, it was, um, you know, just spending a little bit of time and caring about what I needed and making sure that I got kind of the little things done. So um, I took a little bit of extra time sleeping in. I made sure that I had everything ready for the day of work so I didn't have to worry about it. It was almost like I went through all of the different homeworks that were about me and tried to apply them. I tried not to avoid when I was scared of, of not doing something. I cleared out a cabinet, which was the decluttering. And um got a massage, which was a great self-care one and a lot of fun, and just took care of giving myself a little bit more of a higher priority on my list. Nice. Yeah, we got, so you don't we got a lot have of good to feedback go to extremes, on that. You know, just increasing it a little bit does make a huge difference. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we got a lot of feedback from that. I mean, I, one person wrote in and said that it, 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 it was the one that spoke to them the most directly, and they were really happy we did the show. And I can, I can really see that. I can really see how... You know, maybe you've become because our entire culture, everything on our TV, you know, kind of feeds this highly dramatic, highly non-personal uh, view of ourselves. And um, I think sometimes people just have to stop and make sure that they're okay. Yeah, take care of yourself first, because then, if not, who's going to take care of it? So, if you haven't already seen that podcast, take a listen. I think that it's a really important podcast. It really does deal with one of the core beliefs that our culture, unfortunately, um, puts against. We always deal with taking putting others first is the best thing, but really, martyrdom just makes people angry, and it's not really effective in the long run. So, if it's something that you do once in a while, great. If it's something that is a pattern of where you are actually allowing others to step on you or even worse allowing people like allowing yourself to step on yourself it's something that you kind of need to make sure to take a look at um, and it'll make your life happier and healthier you'll feel guilty the first few times you do it though just to let you know you have to deal with the guilt of putting yourself first first so do you have any uh so what's the awesome subject for today how are we going to better take care of ourselves this time well, today, this is, um, it's a relaxation technique. This one's more meditative than just the breathing. It's a step up. Um, this one is called passive relaxation. It's a little bit different than just the breathing in that it helps you through listening to it, guide yourself through relaxing each of your body parts. And 
I find this one highly effective. I really, really like it. And I find that if I am exceptionally stressed or if I can't sleep, I'll even do this with myself, like in my own mind. But lucky for you, I'll, you'll be able to hear <laughs> me. I'll actually go through the passive relaxation and you can listen to it. And so it's really nice to deal with uh, residual anxiety. So if you can't sleep, um, you're angry, you have uh, going through depression, great for having headaches or migraines. Um, if you're in a lot of pain, um, discomfort, if you're in mourning, uh, dealing with addictions, this is something that you should do. It's, it's very, very good for you and very good for meditative state. Now, um, I'm at a standing desk. Might I fall down? Well, I would say that the best way to do this would not be standing. You actually <laughs> would want to be either lying down or sitting and somewhere that's comfortable that will allow the flow um, and this would probably be something more for super functional, but that would allow the flow for your body to go through. So you want to make sure that you're able to, to not be restricting any blood flow to your body because that's really important for relaxation. Okay. So standing, you have good blood flow, but you actually want to be able to relax and not have your muscles being used during this time. You want to give yourself a break. Okay. Noted. Right. And another thing that's really good with it is that it ends up giving you – um, you know, a space, a little bit of time to heal. Your body can relax during the period of time that you're doing a relaxation exercise. So they've had tests where, you know, you're just your brain gets to heal a little bit more. You're a little bit smarter and you have a less plaque in your mind after doing a lot of meditative states than you would if not. And that's really good for you. You can't buy medicine that will do that. I guess it's like well, running you your car engine all the time. It's going to wear out. You've got to, everything needs a chance to rest, recuperate, heal. Yeah. And if you're constantly anxious or aware or bothered or thinking about other things, you're not going to be doing that. Our body really does only heal when it is at rest and calm. And that's why yes. we get sick and illness from being stressed or anxious. So we can engage our inner Wolverine now. Right. Right. Give yourself a little bit of a slight moment of peace. And the nice thing is that the same thing with the breathing exercises, this is like, you know, step one up from the breathing exercises, is that it will allow you to heal not just after you're done, but it will the residual relaxation effects, you can feel them for a certain period of time afterwards, and they'll be longer and longer as you do this more. So just as a way to start, we should probably mute our phones, put them someplace the vibration doesn't sound, put our Blackberry somewhere the notification light won't distract us, kind of just uh, detect ourselves for a few minutes to get zen. Yeah, you would. Um, I'm not going to be looking at the chat room because I wouldn't be able to read and giggle at the same time, which would really ruin um, what we're doing. But you should, um, you know, maybe even listen to this after when you can relax and not have to worry. Um, sit somewhere comfortably. If you are listening, you could close your eyes, um, sit back or lie down. And it takes about six to seven minutes and just kind of enjoy being in the moment. <laughs> it's so funny. A Triple J from the chat room is saying, you know, everyone make me laugh. I'm actually going to be closing off the door for the chat room so I will not see it. <laughs> nice. You are smart. She's outsmarted you, chat room, because she does her meditation and yeah. her brain is super functional. Yeah, maybe not. It's just I, I know me and I love to giggle and there's a great – and laughing is very, very healing and, and very reparative and we'll probably have to do – yeah, we have like a 10,000 different things that we should do it on. But humor is really, really good for stress relaxation. But this is something different. So me laughing in the middle of it probably wouldn't be great and helpful. All right. Do it. Okay. So I'm going to get um, prepped for this and um, I'm going to read. There's many different types of passive relaxation. Passive relaxation is different. There's many different types of relaxation exercises. There's active relaxation, passive relaxation, guided imagery. They're all a little bit different and focus on different things. This one is just on relaxing various parts of your body and it's highly effective. If you can actually do this, and it might be difficult during the podcast, but if you can actually do this after or during, you'll find it's really nice and calming for your body. So we're going to go through it. Okay, so we begin. Sit comfortably. I would turn off the chat room if you can, um, or just don't look, look away from the computer for a few minutes. Okay. Lie down or sit comfortably in your chair. 
hands by your side and your legs uncrossed. Close your eyes. This will help you concentrate on the different parts of your body that we will be going through. I'd like you to take a slow, deep breath in and slowly exhale. Let's do that again. A slow, deep breath in and slowly exhale. I'd like you to focus your attention on both of your hands. Notice the sensations coming from the muscles of your hands and as they become clearer, relax the muscles of your fingers, thumbs, palms, and back of your wrists. As the muscles in your hands relax, you may notice sensations of relaxation. These sensations may include tingling, throbbing, warmth, or heaviness. Focus your attention on your lower and upper arms. Relax these muscles. Concentrate on your shoulders and let that drop so that your arms and shoulders all the way down to your hands and fingers are heavy loose and restfully relaxed. Now focus your attention on your face, starting with your forehead. Notice the sensations coming from the muscles in your forehead. As the sensations become clearer, smooth out and relax your forehead till it is completely relaxed. Allow the feelings of relaxation to descend to your eyebrows, eyelids, the muscles behind your eyes, down to your nose. Continue to the cheeks, and then the muscles underneath your throat, your tongue, lips, and your jaw, so that all the muscles in your face are smooth and relaxed. Allow the feeling of relaxation to continue down the muscles in the back of your neck and over both of your shoulders. First your right and then your left. Allow the relaxation to flow down your back like water to your lower back, down your chest, to your stomach. As you're focusing on your stomach, allow the attention to go to your breathing and notice how your abdominal muscles move slowly and gently as you breathe. Focus your attention on the sensations of your stomach and allow the muscles there to relax as they do. You may notice some warm, pleasant, sensations in your stomach. Now focus your attention on both of your legs. Notice the sensations there. As they become clearer, relax your thighs, your calves, your feet, and even your toes.
As your legs relax, you may notice sensations of relaxation. These sensations may include tingling, throbbing, warmth, or heaviness. I'd like you to focus your attention on your breathing. Continue to breathe in a slow and regular fashion. Notice that the air, as it enters and leaves your body, and you'll notice that the air is cooler as you breathe in and warmer as you breathe out. Feel the cool air come in and the warm come out. I'd like you to imagine as you breathe in that you are breathing in relaxation that enters your lungs and flows to every part of your body. Feel it engulfing your body in calm and relaxation. Let go of any stress that you may be still holding. As you breathe out, breathe out that stress and tension and feel it expelled from your body in each exhaled breath. Breathe in your calm and relaxation and exhale any of the stress and anxiety. I'm going to count backwards from five, and which number allow your muscles to relax one more step as I count down. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Zero. Continue to relax and enjoy the sensations of being relaxed and calm. Now slowly, very slowly, open your eyes while preserving the feelings of calm and relaxation that you have achieved. Ooh, I did not fall down. <laughs> I couldn't look, just in What's case. What's amazing is our chat stopped completely when you started, and it's just coming back now. Really? I'm yeah. so excited. That's awesome. <laughs> I Can was I tell all a story worried. Of, I have... Yeah, please. Can I tell a story what happened the first time I tried this? Yes, please do. Oh, can I first just say, I was all I was all worried. I was like, oh my God, like what happens if while I'm reading this, because I'm not looking up, that, you know, I'm thinking, oh, you know, what happens if I've dropped off and no one's hearing me or something else has happened or no one's there? So, if, yeah. If we change the channel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it was interesting because the first time I did this, because um, we, we try out some of this stuff before we do the show. And the first time I did this, I was in a chair and about three quarters of the way through, I felt like I was falling and I got up in a start and Georgia kind of looked at me and laughed and said that I was, I must be so sleep deprived that I was falling asleep. So we tried it again and the same thing happened. Only this time my hand flew up and I punched myself in the face. (laughs) So this time none of that happened. It's, It's actually improved. So you're not sleep deprived anymore. You've been doing your sleep homework. Yeah. Yeah, no, some people say that uh, Sock has mentioned that heavy is something that really helps the word heavy really helps him relax and allow it. Um, and uh, it's funny that that Triple J says how you know he kind of got freaked out when his hands were throbbing, and that's why we we go through um, you know what it might feel like because if you're not used to being relaxed, um, this could be actually a scary experience to feel the kind of throbbing as the blood rushes back to the parts in your body because what happens is when you're anxious is that your blood leaves your small 
like your hands and your feet, all small areas which you would be using to defend yourself so you don't bleed to death, goes to the main muscles so you can run. So allowing yourself to relax is actually allowing your blood flow to go back to those areas. And that's why you'll feel the throbbing. So it's normal. Um, and it, it's actually very good. And someone else has mentioned um, that it helps a lot, that their heartbeat is finally normal when they're usually very, very quick. If yes, you can't actually do this, if you can't go through the passive relaxation um, on your own, like if you find it difficult to do that, it's probably actually a sign that you have exceptionally high anxiety and your body has been in that state for a very long time. Because what this does is it forces you to say, to do two things. It forces you to stop being anxious, which is your natural defense system. So it's actually telling you that you're allowing yourself to be vulnerable for a certain period of time. You're not on high alert. You're lowering your alert level from, say, red to green. And that can be very frightening in itself and can cause anxiety. So you might actually be at such a state of anxiety that you're not allowing yourself to be able to be relaxed. Or you might be worried about what other people will think or um, not feel comfortable with that. So definitely take a look into that because it's, it's not a good state to be in and you're just burning your body at a really high rate. Should you maybe do it, you know, where you're alone, someplace where you're not going to feel like people are watching you? At the beginning, yes. Um, if you're used to doing um, yoga or anything else where you do that, you might be able to just sit down and do it on your own. But I would say it's better to actually have someone, instead of going through the script yourself, it is better to actually have someone read it to you. So, yeah, being on camera must be more difficult for you, Renee. You did it in, on camera in front of everyone, so that's very cool. Um, well, now they have you to read it to them, George. They can just replay the episode. That's exactly what you should do. You should actually do it. And um, how often should you do it? Mm. Um, if you have high anxiety, I would say twice a day. Okay. Once at night, um, especially if you have difficulty sleeping, this will really help you. If um, And then once in the morning when you start your day. You could do that when you do your stretches or when you're drinking or you know right after you're, you're done having something to eat. If it's mild, I would say once a day. And if you have no anxiety at all and everything's great, I would still say do this at least three to four times a week because it is so beneficial and it's a really nice thing to do. It's really great for your brain and for your healing and for your ability to focus. So no matter what, it'll be helpful. So why, why is it helpful? What is it doing to us that gives it those beneficial qualities? Well, when it allows your um, your parasympathetic nervous system, what happens is it, it turns it on. So it stops your, um, your anxiety system from running. It says that you can turn off and you can relax for a certain period of time. And that allows all of the healing hormones to start, all, all of your body's natural healing to start the process and give you a little bit of a break. It's like taking a time out. It's like saying, okay, the world can stop for a moment and right now I'm just going to focus on myself and healing and being focused and centered and it also slows down your day a little bit if you're running at such a fast pace and you're highly anxious you anxious you're missing all of your life's moments so this gives you that pause lets your body relax lets gives you the time to organize your mind to organize everything that has to be done and then you can go back at it in a way that is calmer, more relaxed, and the residual side effects of being relaxed will last for, after a while, they can last for hours afterwards. What's interesting so is on a previous episode of, of um, Super Functional, we did a neutral back exercise where you basically take the effects of gravity off your body, so your neck pain, your shoulder pain, your back pain, you just get a chance to take a break from all that, and you're basically doing the same thing with our stress system here. You're giving us a chance to take that off so we can just relax for a second. Yeah, no, I think that that's actually a, a really great point. It, it allows you to heal and it allows you to get a little bit of a break from everything that might be running through your day. And you will look at things more clearly when you are in a relaxed state than you will be anxious. So you would say most people don't do this because they say to me, I don't have time. Well, okay, first of all, if you don't have time to spend six or seven minutes on taking care of your own anxiety and your health, you're too low on the list of priorities. Go back and listen to the last and, episode now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And two, this will actually make you more efficient. We do not work well at a high anxious state all the time. We can do that for short periods of time and it's very beneficial. But for long periods of time, it just destroys our body. And 
you can't get that back. You just can't deal with that. That is something that you cannot spend money or anything else on in order to return. And the effects, I think that we underestimate the effects that stress will have at our body, even if we are um, fabulously able to deal with most things in life and we say, oh, they, that doesn't bother me. No, you know what? This gives yourself a break and everyone deserves that and needs that. What's funny is if you told somebody that you had their daily dose of anti-aging serum just six minutes away, they would get in the car and they would drive, you know, as fast and as far as they had to to get it for that daily dose. And here you're you're basically saying the same thing. This is your daily dose of anti-aging, of anti-stress, of, of getting your mind back. Right. It would be, you know, do you want to treat yourself like an iPad or do you want to treat yourself like a touchpad? You know, are you bargain basement and you're going to be sold off just as quickly as possible just to get rid of things? Or are you going to spend a little bit of time and make sure that you take care of something because you are the most important thing that you own? Yes, absolutely. There's no service plan. There's no, you can't buy the version two of yourself next year when you get bored or you have a problem. This is the one that you have for life. And you need to make sure that you take care of yourself so that when the time comes and you, for some reason, you know, something big happens in your life you are at least at, in a better state to begin. So this is actually also preventative. You know, if you are um, centered in your world, you'll be able to handle life's bumps much easier, you know, than not. And, and this gives, gives you, you that. It's, it's taking off a little bit of that cognitive load that you're just carrying this around all day and it leaves less room for everything else. And if you could put this aside, you'll have so much more energy and peace and, and, and whatever you need to tackle everything else that comes up. Exactly. This also stops your mind from all those um, perseverating negative thoughts that we often have that were, were, you know, that kind of run us through things that we have to worry about, things that we have to do. The reason that this works so well for sleeping is that it stops that. It allows you to focus on each part of your body that you may not be thinking about is stressed. And you'll actually feel it. I always, when I do the one, when I, I have it done for me and I, or I read my own, listen to my own tapes, which is very unusual, um, but works. And, you know, the one for the forehead where it says to just relax your forehead. It's interesting because I don't notice how much of my stress is being taken there. It really is. And I feel so much better and so much more relaxed. The same thing with your jaw. We're always using our jaws, especially chatty people like myself. But even if not, to just be able to relax it takes a lot of the stress away. Well, I think sometimes we're so stressed for so long and so consistently that that becomes reset and our body thinks that's normal. And it takes something like this, some kind of wake up for us to realize that we have stress there and it's not normal. And we've got to reset our body to a better state. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. All right. So um, can, sorry, can I give the homework out, Renee? Yeah, I was about to ask you. Yeah, so your homework would be to do this once per day. If you are um, highly anxious or you're dealing with something that is difficult um, so that your stress might be running at it between a 6 to a 10, I would say do it twice per day because it is that beneficial. And um, let me know if you found it helpful and relaxing. I would love to know if, you, um, if it works for you or not. But do it every day, once a day, and you'll actually find that your base level of anxiety will go down. Now, for slacker types like myself, it doesn't mean we can stop doing the breathing you gave us in episode one, right? This is an extra breathing exercise. Yes, this is on top of the eight to ten, you know, relaxing breaths that you should be doing um, six to ten times a day as well. So this is on top of it. This is like the next step. And like you've, you've done your basic lifting, you've done your preparatory exercises. Now, you know, she's taking it up a notch. Yes, Exactly. It's it's um, 2.0. <laughs> Welcome to the <laughs> yellow belt class. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and if you like doing the breathing and you find it helpful, um, it's this will be just so much more so. Um, and if you're if you're dealing with something that's difficult and you're saying I'm too stressed, do this. Just try it out. Allow yourself to relax. If you're worried about other people seeing it, do it in a safe place. Do it somewhere where you feel comfortable. Um, you know, have a glass of water with you beforehand and just allow your body to relax. Yes, and Sock's talking about headaches or migraines. This really works well for stress, especially tension headaches. Um, it also works for migraines if you can catch it 
fast enough. It won't work at, at a later state, but it will be better than nothing. You can listen to this and take whatever other meds that you might take as well. But this will help also for that as well. Good for pain, you know, dealing with pain, uh, mental and physical as well. Nice. Georgia, where can we find out more about you? You can find me um, on Twitter at Georgia TIPB and also on the website www.zenandtech.tv. Nice. You can find me at Renee Ritchie. You can find all of us at Zen and Tech. You can email us at podcast at Zen and Tech or leave a comment on the show when it goes live. We are here each and every Sunday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, thereabouts. Um, right after iPad Live. You can find all of our podcasts, including Zen and Tech, iPhone Live, iPad Live, Super Functional, Iterate, Crackberry.com, Android Central, Palmcast, WP Central, all of them at mobilenations.com slash shows. If you haven't already, please go to iTunes. Please subscribe to the show and leave a rating. It helps iTunes feature us, and that means we can find more people. Um, please recommend the show to your friends, to your coworkers, people you play sports with. They are almost certainly as stressed and anxious as you are, um, and we would like to, you know, get them Zen and teching as well. And I'd like to thank the uh, iPhone accessory store at tip at store.tippy.com for sponsoring this episode. I want to thank Marcus from Smartphone Experts and Mobile Nations for hooking up our super sweet new video feed. And I want to thank everyone in the chat room for being here live because, as George always says, you guys make the show. It's so true. I, I, it's, it means a lot. So thank you. We'll see you next week, folks. Thanks. <laughs>